Hey guys, I'm uh, Mr. Smith's Kitchen. I'm Brian, Mr. Smith, Kitchen. As always, almost always, um, sometimes we come from other places. Uh, if you're new to my channel, welcome. And let me take my glasses off so we don't get that uh, annoying glare bounce off from the window, uh, which I will set the curtains on to better the light. Um, if you're new to my channel, um, welcome. I'm glad you found me. You know, I really hope you get something out of my channel. Even if it's just this video, you check out my other videos. Uh, we do all sorts of things on here. Um, basically, you know, just documenting us and uh, trying to build a community in the process. So uh, and if you're returning, thank you. Um, that means you've gotten something out of what I do and what I say or, you know, or you think I'm just a complete moron and you like to watch morons. Either way, um, I'm glad you're here. So uh, while I'm thinking about it, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, notification bell is right beside the subscription box. If you want to know when my videos come out, um, I try to get out three a week. Doesn't always work, um, but I appreciate you uh, taking up part of your time, time of something you never get back, uh, to spend with me. And uh, that being said, comments, love comments. Um, just please be civil. You don't have to agree with me, but be civil. And I know I say that in every video, but I feel that's really important. Um, it's all part of being a good neighbor in our community. Or any community for that matter. It's okay to disagree. It's okay to have a difference of opinion. Just be civil as you do it. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. Always appreciated. Not necessary. Although it does help us grow our community um, in that aspect. So today I thought we would... Uh, it's going to be kind of a quick prep. Long wait. But yet uh, quick ending meals. Uh, I'm actually going to do three of them. Uh, hopefully you'll get to see all three of them be made. It'll just really depend on how fast I am with this camera. Um, but we're I'm going to attempt to do uh, some wings. Uh, they're Betty White's wings. They're they're called a Pacific wing, and it's a, it's a recipe from the '60s, uh, and it's almost like a teriyaki Asian style uh, wing. And then we're also going to do a zesty sweet and zesty meatball and we're going to do uh some taco rolls they're like a cinnamon roll only with taco filling in them uh, i think they were called a taco cinnamon roll is on the recipe but i think that's an oxymoron uh one sweet one savory so we're just going to call them taco rolls why not um and they're fun uh the the last recipe the taco roll recipe you can pretty much make your own any way shape or form uh, these, the other two I'm not sure about yet. I've never made them. I've never actually made, uh, the wings or the taco rolls, the, uh, sweet and zesty meatballs I've made once, but they're all pretty fast to prepare. They just have a, uh, decent, uh, cook time to them. Um, and one, two go in the oven, one goes in the crock pot. So that being said, let me get the camera moved and we'll get down here and start making, uh, Betty White's wings. All right. I'll see you here in just a moment. All right, got the camera moved. Um, got the recipe written down. As always, always write down my recipes in a notebook. If I like them, we keep them. Or if you like them, we keep them. Uh, don't like them, we just tear it out and move on. Um, that way it's easier. So things you will need for this recipe. You will need a uh, shallow baking sheet, which I'll show you. I'm just gonna use one of my, uh, one of my Swiss roll pans, which is right there. And you'll need some aluminum foil. I actually have two different sizes. Because uh, to marinate this, the chicken, we're going to put the uh, chicken on this pan, wrap it in the foils. And I thought, well, why not use two different sizes? Uh, making cheesecakes, you need different size foils. So let me set that back down real quick. I'm coming, I promise. I got something to show you guys that I got in the mail the other day. All right, so check this out. I don't know if you can wholeheartedly see it, which you can't, uh, but uh, somebody sent me an apron. Um, and it actually says Mr. Smith's Kitchen on it. It's nice, uh, pockets, uh, it's vinyl. It's actually very sturdy. Um, and I thought, well, let's put it on and uh, give it a shot. Save my clothes, so to speak. All right, so. Um, and thank you to whoever sent it to me. I, I truly appreciate it. Um, I, that's awesome. You know, um, hands down. 
So Chris really liked it. It came in the mail while I was at work. And uh, she's like, did you order something? I'm like, no, I didn't order anything. Um, and, it, and I thought, well, okay. And she opened it up for me, and lo and behold, it was an apron. I thought, oh, what a wonderful gift. Um, you can't argue that, not one bit. All right, so other than the uh, uh, shallow pan, aluminum foil, you will need uh, a pot. That's pretty much the extent of it. So, as far as ingredients go, first thing you will need is about three pounds worth of chicken wings, which we'll play with those here in a minute after we get this uh, done, because we're going to have to let this sauce cool. So, as far as the sauce goes... We're going uh, to turn on our, our burner. You're going to want a heavier pan. Um, I've learned heavy bottom pans are kind of the way to go, or pot. Whether it's uh, saucepans or uh, stock pots, heavier bottom pans, thicker bottoms, uh, give you a more even heat. So you're going to need a half a cup of butter, which is one stick. One stick. Um, and we're going to need... This is just a ton of soy sauce. This thing's got so much flavor. Uh, one cup of soy sauce. Soy sauce. Chris, Chris and Sarah say I say it wrong all the time, and I'm sure I do. Uh, we will need three-quarter cup of chicken broth. All right. Um, and you can use, if you make your own chicken broth, use it. Um, if you don't, buy it. I mean, that was bought chicken broth. I have some. Showed it to you last week. Um, I just didn't feel the need to uh, uh, open up a, a jar um, at the moment. I do have the store bought stuff, and yeah, I try to reserve the homemade stock for special occasions. All right, so we got our chicken broth in there, we got our soy sauce in there, we got our butter in there. Our next ingredient is one cup of brown sugar, all right, and it's just loosely packed. In baking, it's always packed. Um, not so much in uh, uh, cooking. So it's it's loosely packed. You know, I evened it out, firmed it down a little bit, but not too much. Get that in there. And then the next thing we will need is a half a teaspoon of uh, mustard, dry mustard powder, which is right there. You will need a half a teaspoon of garlic, which is right there. And then... The last two ingredients are options, uh, but I'm going to take these options because they sound good. And that is a teaspoon of crushed red pepper and then one to two teaspoons of honey. And we're just going to pour those in there. We'll get the honey in there. Yeah, get something to get the honey out with. Now, if you don't want your, I, I poured a little over two teaspoons in there, so it's okay if some of it sticks. But if you don't want your honey to stick to your whatever it is you're putting it in, uh, spray it down with some cooking spray real quick, or if you want to melt a little bit of butter, you could do that too. Um, but cooking spray will help keep it from sticking. So, but in this case, I didn't really care if I had a little extra in there because it's optional. So, but I, the reason for the brown sugar and the honey, at least this is my thought, is to help balance the uh, the savior savorier flavor of the uh, soy sauce. So we're just gonna mix this long enough. We're gonna heat this long enough to get everything incorporated and get the butter melted. And then uh, we'll be able to set this off to the side and move on to the next project. All right, so when I come back, we'll set this off to the side and uh, we'll move on to working with the wings. So we got our uh, sauce heated and we let it cool. Now, even as it's cooling, you're going to want to stir it a little bit. I've noticed it does start to get a skim coat on it, and I'm sure that's from the sugar. Now, you don't have to necessarily bring this to a boil. All you're looking to do is uh, melt the butter, basically. Melt the butter, dissolve the brown sugar. So the next thing we need to do, uh, let me move my mess over, is uh, wings are, are really just one of the simplest dishes to make. And, and they're fun. I, I personally think they're a lot of work to eat, like eating lobster or uh, crab legs. Because, uh, you know, you got the bone and you have to eat a bunch of them. But I like wings. Um, so, when it comes to the type of wings you use, you can buy your wings, if you can find them, um, already done up, you know, in a bag. These, I, I couldn't find any of those when I went to bed. So, I just bought whole, large chicken wings. All right, which means that the drum and the thigh, or the 
the drum and the wing itself were um or the flat the flat and the drum drummy as they would call them in the restaurant industry were still connected and then they had the tip on it also the tip i don't use those when i make wings um i will save those in a baggie put them in the freezer and then when it comes time to make more chicken stock i'll throw them in there yeah they don't want to waste anything um, if at all possible and it'll give it lots of flavor so the next thing we have to do is easy um we're going to do about two more minutes worth of work to wait for about four hours four to six hours we're just going to take this sauce now that it's cooled off we're going to pour it on to our wings to let them marinate all right and and that's not going to change at all um we're going to let these things marinate for about four to eight hours but you can go as long as 24 hours so i'll stick my cover on top of there and we're gonna pull it up this foil because we're not even going to take the marinade off of it as we cook it or yeah cook it in the oven um according to the directions on the recipe at any rate. So we're gonna, we're all we'll have to do is just take the foil off the top so we don't steam them. We don't wanna steam our wings, we want to bake them. Um, that way they get good flavor. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to take these and I'm gonna put them in the fridge. Um, we're gonna put them in the fridge. Like I said, minimum you wanna do is four hours. Um, but you can go all the way up to 24 hours. So I could have done these yesterday, um, but I didn't. I had, By the time I got off work, went and did some grocery shopping and got home. We had dinner and it was late. I was tired. Um, so I thought, you know what? I'll just do it in the morning. So I'm doing it in the morning. Uh, company isn't coming until around 5. We probably won't eat till near 5.30. So that will give these right around eight, eight and a half hours to be in the fridge marinating before we put them in the oven. So when I come back, uh, we'll go put them in the oven and uh, talk about what we need to do to put them in the oven. I mean, it's, it's really simple, but um, we'll put them in the oven and then we'll get to check them out and look at them, try one. All right, see you here in just a little bit. Okay, so um, we got everything marinating in there. It's time to make some meatballs. Hold on for me one second. Okay, sorry about that. We're going to turn off my video. So this has got uh, a lot of moving parts, but it's a lot of fun. So let's uh, start with, uh, I mean, they're easy, and they are a, uh, we made these one at a time. They're a sweet and zesty meatball. So let me get you down here so we can get right into the heat of battle. Uh, we're getting down to crunch time, so to speak. The wings are still marinating, though, and doing fine. If I didn't mention it before, about every hour or so, you want to go and flip those wings if possible. So that way you're consistently getting that juice in there. All the way up to the end, we're even going to flip them while they're cooking. All right, so to make this, um, it's not hard, but you need a crock pot. And what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we're going to, I'm going to double this recipe. So you're going to see me put double the amount in. But you're going to need one can of pineapple uh, chunks, you know, or tidbits or whatever, just not crushed pineapple. And we're just going to pour the juice of the can into the crock pot. I mean, we're going to save the pineapples. I mean, we're going to use them. All right. And in this case, I'm doing two cans. So like I said, uh, don't pay attention to what I'm doing. Just listen more than anything. Um, pay attention to my words. So we got, we're going to put our pineapple juice in there. One can's worth. It's a 15 ounce can. And then we're going to put in some soy sauce. All right, and, I, and it's going to be uh, one teaspoon, not much, just one teaspoon of soy sauce. Put that in there. And then we're going to put in uh, some vinegar. We're going to put in a third a cup of apple cider vinegar. All right, and that's just going to go right in there, like such. And then we're going to uh, put in, i to turn this on low real quick. Sorry, you want it on low. We want to start getting this moving. Um, after we put in our apple cider vinegar, we're going to put in some brown sugar. We're going to put in a half a cup of brown sugar. Okay. So half a cup brown sugar. And then after that, we are going to put in, uh, some cornstarch. Now, when we're, when you're putting in cornstarch, I've learned the hard way, like a million times, 
you want to make sure your fluid is moving. Okay, so we're going to start whisking this and then we're going to put in one tablespoon of cornstarch. Okay, but you want to make sure your, your stuff is moving because if it's not, uh, you'll get clumps. So we got to make sure and that way we can get that all broken up. I mean, it'll cook out and, and some as it goes. But, um, yeah, and best practice, even though it wasn't in the recipe I've learned over time, is to put some of your liquid in the cornstarch first. But, um, like I said, with it being in a slow cooker, it will cook out. That's not a big deal. Okay, so we got that going. But here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I am actually going to take my slow cooker and stick it out there in the uh, dining room where it can remain on and not in our way. That's the important thing, not in our way. So we'll move that back, get this, because next we're going to make the meatballs. Now that's the juice that goes in. All right, got that plugged in. So, step two, very easy. You're gonna need one pound of hamburger. All right, now in this case, I've got two pounds. And, and you can double this recipe. Um, it, I'd almost recommend it, depending on how many you're feeding. So, to our hamburger, we're going to add uh, an egg. In my case, I'm gonna add two. Try not to drop your shell down into the eggs. All right, so we got our eggs in there. We're going to add some Worcestershire sauce. We're going to add one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce to our eggs and ground beef. Then we're gonna add some milk. We're gonna add a quarter a cup of milk, or in my case, a half a cup, but one quarter cup of milk. So, so far we've got a pound of hamburger and an egg. Uh, teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce and we've got a, a half a cup of milk then we're going to add a half a cup of breadcrumbs so over here and then we're going to add uh, some salt and pepper to taste which I always do right around a, a about a quarter of a teaspoon or a heavy pinch all right eighth to a quarter of a teaspoon heavy pinch salt and pepper so, and like I said, it, it's completely the taste. So, I mean, whatever you're, I, we've developed a norm, which is about an eighth to a quarter a teaspoon. You know, because you don't want it to be salt or pepper heavy. You want it to blend. All right. And then salt and pepper to taste. And then we're going to mix this all together and form one inch balls. Now, if you want, you can, uh, Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to add the minced onions. You are gonna need two tablespoons of minced onion. All right, I'm using a dried minced onion, which is fine, and they'll, re well, they'll reconstitute. Um, I'm just gonna use my hands to mix this up with, but you can uh, use a, a blender, you know, or a food process uh, mixer, geez, oh Pete, um, to mix this up with. The only thing I caution you with using a mixer, because my mom used a mixer to make meatloaf. You know, anytime she had to mix a hamburger product, she would, uh, she would use her mixer. You know, and then that way she didn't have to get her hands dirty. I don't mind getting my hands dirty. Um, the only, the, <laughs> it's odd because I work in a pizza shop, but the only texture I don't care for on my hands is the feel of cornmeal and oil. Um, there is something about that that just makes me weird it out. Daddy. Yes, ma'am. A bowl. You need a what? A bowl. A bowl? Bowl. Oh, okay. Well, you're going to hold on a second, honey, if you don't mind. Okay, okay hold on. Uh, uh, hands are a mess. Okay, give me one second and I'll be right back. I got to help out. Okay, you. sorry about that. I had to get Abby a bun so she could make a sandwich as part of her after school snack. That's what she does. Okay, so I'm going to move you down here closer to the 
skillet. Sorry about that, but unfortunately, I am my cameraman. All right, so we got that going on. Can you put that on the? Thank you. All right. So next thing we need to do, heat up a cast iron skillet. So we're gonna heat this up, medium high heat, and I'm gonna grab some oil, these little grapeseed oil here. Put a couple, you know, teaspoons in, a couple, two, three teaspoons in worth. We're gonna heat that up, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start making up some one inch balls out of the meat we just put together. All right, it doesn't doesn't take long, but we want to brown these on all sides. All right, so. Yeah, let me get a, I'm gonna get a few of these made up. And I mean, it's not hard. I mean, I'll show you real quick. All we're gonna do is take the hamburger and we're gonna get about one inch balls worth. I mean, they can, I mean, they could be as big or small as you want. You know, and just like that, okay? And then we'll put them in the skillet once it's warmed up and we'll, uh, well, we're just going to cook them. They don't have to be cooked through all the way by any means because we're putting them in the crock pot for about an hour and a half, um, which will finish cooking them. And you're going to look for an internal temperature on them of 180. But let me go ahead and get these balled up and uh, we'll uh, work it from there. All right. I'll see you back here in just one moment. Okay. So brought the uh, slow cooker back in here for us. Got all our meatballs cooked up. And like I said, they don't have to be completely done all the way through because we're putting them in the crock pot for the next hour and a half. So we'll go ahead and get these ones out of the pan here. And then I've got all of these little beauties here we cooked up. So we'll go ahead and get those put in there. And then we're almost done. I it, it, That's how easy this is. We're just putting those few things together and then we're gonna the only thing we have left to do is i diced up one green pepper you're gonna need one green pepper to put in here and then we're gonna put the pineapples in it so we'll go ahead and get these guys in here like such There we go. Then we'll take our pineapples. And we're going to pour them on top. Just like such. And like such. And then we've got some green peppers to go in there. Like I said, I just rough chopped them. Rough chopped them. That was all. All right, so while I was frying up the uh, meatballs, I went ahead and it, my our uh, our wings have been in the uh, oven. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the lid on this, and I'm gonna turn it on high. But while we were getting the meatballs fried up, I went ahead and I turned the oven on 375 degrees. You're like, what? Wait a minute. We were just talking about crock pot, and we were, um, and that was a great observation. So what I'm gonna do next is this. I'm gonna take the wings that have been marinating for the last uh, six and a half, seven hours out of the fridge. And we're going to uh, put those in the oven. So we've got meatballs going that are gonna take an hour and a half. The wings are gonna take about an hour and 15 to an hour and 30 minutes. Um, and we're not gonna do anything to them. Here, I'll bring them out so you can see them real quick. So you can see what we're working with. So all we got to do is scoot the slow cooker back. All we have to do with the wings, I mean, this is how easy this is. You know, our little bit of prep work has paid off. So to get these wings in the oven, all right, I've already flipped them uh, four times, you know, about once every 35, 40 minutes, you know, to an hour. You know, you, you just want to keep flipping them. And you'll see, I mean, it's got the, what looks like a layer of fat on top. That's just the butter. 
where it got cold. And, and that's good because that helps things stick. So we're going to go through and flip these all over just one more time. Just like such. And I'm telling you, they I, I don't know how they are looking on camera, but these look amazing in real life. And you can tell where, okay, so, so salt helps tenderize chicken. All right, well, it helps tenderize any meat. And that soy sauce has a ton of salt in it. Just a ton of salt. Here, I can move quicker with my fingers. So, by using that soy sauce to help to, as part of this uh, marinade, we uh, essentially are tenderizing the meat at the same time. Which is going to make this just an incredibly tender uh, chicken wing. That out of my way. All right, so we got the oven going. All I'm going to do is stick these in the oven and I'm going to check them at about an hour and 15 minutes. I want my wings to be at about 165 degrees, but I'm not taking any of that marinade off of there or anything, which is why I'm leaving the aluminum foil on the pan. Because with all the brown sugar and the butter and everything, that's going to caramelize. You know, uh, no different than when we make a cake and you, you put brown sugar in something, you know, uh, icing or whatever, it caramelizes. We're essentially, in, in some ways, making a caramel, a caramel sauce with uh, some really nice savory notes. And, and that's awesome. So I'm going to set my timer for one hour and 30 minutes or 90 minutes. And let it run but i'll check them in an hour and 15 minutes to see where we're at because they're going to at least take that long all right so we've only got one thing left to make and i'm not going to make it quite yet i'm going to let these bad boys run for about 20 minutes or so and then we'll make the uh taco rolls all right i'll be right back all right so we're kind of down to crunch time now so here's what we got left to do we're going to make a uh the the taco rolls so we Simple ingredients, you will need just a cast iron skillet. So we'll go ahead and get started on that. Uh, got about an hour and change before company shows up. This dish shouldn't take any more than about 45 minutes to make, so we should be in good shape. Things you're gonna start out with, all right? First thing you're gonna need to do is warm up your skillet. Ours is still fairly warm from where we uh, cooked that, uh, cooked the meatballs. So that's not a problem so to speak. And then the next thing we'll need to do, because I forgot to grab it earlier, is grab some butter, which I had a portion stick running around here somewhere, but I can't find it. So we'll just get a new stick. wise man once told me never run out of butter so we're going to need two tablespoons of butter and we're going to throw this in the pan all right and what we're going to do is just brown this hamburger up we got well that's a little over a pound of hand no that's about a pound pound and a quarter of hamburger right around there but we're going to want to brown that up for first thing just brown it up so we'll go ahead get our butter melted Now, let me bring you guys in just a little bit closer. I feel like you're 800 miles away. Hold on for me one sec. All right, that's much better. All right, so we got our butter melted. Now we're just going to start frying our hamburger. Get it out of the package here. Yep, I mean, this one isn't hard to make at all. None of these are hard to make. They're all relatively simple, quick, and fast. Like I said, these would be good if you were throwing a party you know, or you know, I had to take a quick dish somewhere. Um, tailgating would be another good one. Or, you know, football season, uh, well, I just ended with the Super Bowl. Um, glad to see the Rams win. Uh, wish it was the Bengals. You know, somewhat. It wasn't my Steelers, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but, you know, you could do this for March Madness, for the playoffs and basketball. You know, I mean, it just, 
any of these are just quick, easy uh, side dishes or meals to make for any occasion. You know, something to snack on, movie night, you know, whatever it takes. All right, well, I'm gonna get this browned up and then uh, we'll go to the next ingredient. Okay, so our next step, I have, it calls for, I have an onion, but it doesn't specify what size onion. But I had a, I had a whole small onion, so I went ahead and did a whole small onion and, and we just diced it up. And we diced up, uh, minced up one piece of gar uh, one clove of garlic, okay? Now we're gonna heat this up until, uh, or we're gonna cook this until the onions become translucent. About five more minutes, and then we, uh, for about five, it'll take, you know, three to five minutes for these onions to, to go clear. Yes. Okay. I'm making, uh, uh, taco rolls. Yeah, like cinnamon rolls, only with taco meat. So we're going to let this cook for three to five minutes and then uh, we'll put the next set of ingredients in. All right, so now our onions are going translucent. The next thing we need to put in here is one tablespoon of taco seasoning. All right, so and I make my own taco seasoning. If there's taco seasoning you prefer, you know, have at it. Yeah, this is a half a tablespoon, by the way, so that way I want everybody to go, well, he just said one tablespoon. He just put two in there. Yeah, but I am going to put a little extra in because I really like our taco seasoning. And then on top of that, we're going to put in uh, two teaspoons of tomato paste. Yeah. One. Two. Yes, honey. You did what? Sorry, Abby's outside swinging on the swing. It's actually in the 50s here today for the first time forever. And then the last thing we're going to put in is two tablespoons of water. Not much. Because remember, we just put in, we have all that butter in there. Plus, one little bit of fat is in this meat. This is actually a fairly lean meat, so it doesn't have a lot of fat. Which makes me happy. You know, i not a big on the whole fat thing. When it, I... It's a it's a 90 10 is what it is 90 percent meat 10 percent fat uh, the average is uh, 80 20 is what most people have in the grocery store I mean now they offer a variety of them but you know I I can't see paying money to buy uh, something you're gonna have to put into a container and then throw in the trash so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just cook this until the tomato sauce gets mixed up in there and Everything gets good and settled. And then we're going to take this off the heat and we got to let it cool down. Yeah, you know, almost completely. Yeah, you know, if not, uh, the pizza dough that we're about to put this in uh, for our, to act as our cinnamon roll or our roll will uh, it's, it's essentially melt. Um, it's quite neat. But I mean, I've never done it with this, but I, I've seen it happen. It's kind of like when you make a pie. And you don't let the filling cool completely a fruit pie if you don't let the filling cool completely uh your upper crust your top crust like if you're doing lattice will uh just fall apart on you so you got to let it cool down in order to work with it all right we are combined i'm going to set this aside and let it cool and then once it's uh cooled down we will uh move on to making our our rolls up Okay, so we let the meat cool down completely. So the next thing we have to do is get the dough ready and make the rolls. Um, and this isn't that bad. Now, if you have the time to make your own dough, um, awesome. If you need a recipe for dough, I have one. Uh, it's under uh, Dinner Ideas. And you'll see a recipe for pizza crust. And which it's a mighty fine crust if I do say so myself. We'll go ahead and get this spread out a little bit this way. Our dough doesn't stick to the counter. We're going to get our dough out. It looks like it's having difficulties all of its own. I don't know about where you guys live, but I know here in the Newark, Ohio area, it, choices are slim to none as far as what you can get to purchase. Ooh, I need to use a new tool. 
I'll be right back. I gotta show you guys this, but as far as choices go, there aren't many. Um, and which is kind of not fun. So Chris got me this new rolling pin and it has these grommets on the end of it that allow you to take things down to certain uh, sizes. It's, it's pastry, it's for pastry. And it's just awesome. All right, so we need the green one. So like, I'm gonna take this dough down to an eighth of an inch. So I just grab the green grommet, which is an eighth of an inch. And we'll put that on there. I didn't know exactly how this was gonna turn out when it hit. Now it is really warm in my kitchen at the moment. So I gotta work kind of fast or this dough could get really weird on us. Yeah, if I'd have known I was gonna have to do some rolling, I'd have been a little, bit, a little better prepared. So to speak. I mean, is that not the coolest thing in the world? That way it won't go any thicker than an eighth of an inch. It, it is ideal for pastry, you know, whether it be pie crust or, you know, whatever. Um, I mean, just absolutely awesome. So because we, we want our, our dough to be you know, about 12 inches by 16 inches, right around there. So, which it's it's pretty much 12 inches, but we want a rectangle. All the same. Or at least as close to one as we can get. Now, pre-made pizza dough it is really forgiving. It's funny because I'm rushing. I mean, and that's... Most of the time a bad thing, uh, especially when you're baking, but I'm not, this isn't, I don't know if you would consider this baking or not. Um, yeah, but this is just what it's like in my real life, you know, when I don't always have the time to do what I need to do. All right, so there is my crust. Throw all those in the sink to be washed. I am going to bring this out just a little bit more. There we go, because it's snapping back on us. If you don't know what causes snap back in dough, you know, where it wants to go back to its original shape, it's the glutens. Means the glutens are, uh, they're, they're not relaxed, they're busy. Um, and when they're busy, that's bad. Well, I mean, it's not bad, but, you know, it does make it for a interesting conversation, so to speak. All right, so we got that on there. So. The next thing we want to do is we need one cup of refried beans. One cup refried beans. Uh, if you have time to make your own and you have a recipe, great. If not, grab your favorite brand of refried bean. Um, because it, I mean, it's, it's just refried beans. Um, if I had time to make my own, I most certainly would. And that's not going to work. Let me uh, grab an offset spatula. I tell you, if you ever need, can't decide on a small tool to buy, an offset spatula is the way to go. I kid you not. It has been my trusted friend through thick and thin of many a projects. And they're not expensive. They usually come in a set. Yeah, you'll get like an offset spatula and then a couple of straight spatulas, or at least one straight spatula. And... I, they're both just, especially if you do any kind of cooking or baking, it's so awesome to have. All right, that spread out there like such. Got about a half hour before company shows up. And this takes about 20, 25 minutes, and we've got about 25 minutes left on the wings. And we've got about a half hour left on the meatballs. We should all come together, you know, pretty about the same time. Now, I will say, it, it not that it matters if the food's done or not when our company arrives, because we'll sit and talk, 
you know, have conversation. Uh, talk, the kids will want to see everybody and things like that. But it'd be nice to be at least be close to done. You know, we it's been so long since up until we here recently since we've had people in our house to kind of hang out and have conversation with. Um, our last house, we didn't. It just seemed like there was no room or space to have anybody over. You know, uh, we like to throw summer parties, things like that, but there wasn't any. We didn't have a backyard, so to speak, so it didn't really work out well there. Um, and we had people over every now and then, but it was usually just to visit, never for like food and drinks. All right, we got that on there. Next thing we're going to need to do is put our taco meat on there. Taco meat looks fantastic. Just fantastic. Heck, and there's probably enough taco meat we could do. We could have done two of these easily. I actually bought another. I bought two pizza rolls when I bought them. And uh, I think what may happen is I may make another one of these maybe tomorrow or the next day. Because um, the hamburger, the taco meat, that'll last, you know, a couple, two, three days. All right, we got our taco meat on there. And there is no weight for this, so to speak. I mean, it, other than a cup of uh, beef. And then it, it, it calls for a cup of cheddar cheese, too. Um, or a cheese of your choice. You know, but, it, well, it says cheddar, but I'm using Monterey Jack because that's what we like. Um, or, I'm sorry, Colby Jack. Because that, you know, it, it's one of our staples. And we're just going to give it a liberal sprinkling. Like such. Of the cheese. It, well, okay. Take them so Mommy can see them and she can help you clean them off. When Abby was outside earlier, uh, there's a giant mud pit right by her swing set and uh, she decided well what she didn't decide but she wanted to swing on her swing so you know shoes got really really muddy all right there's that so the last thing we got to do is roll this bad boy up and cut it so we'll roll it up maybe if I can get it going there We have rolled her up. Let me go get a serrated knife real quick. All right, we're gonna cut the ends off just to make it look pretty. Even them up, cause I, I don't know if you noticed or you were able to see, as unfortunately I can't see your point of view. Uh, but the ends didn't really have a whole lot in them. So then we're just gonna cut these into 12 pieces. So I'm gonna start in the middle. Then one in the middle. One in the middle. I may get more than 12 out of this. And another one. My pizza dough is getting warm. So as we get them separated, I've got a 9 by 13 pan sitting right here. And I'm going to set them up right just like that. Just like that. So that way we can start getting them baked all right well i'm gonna finish getting this cut up and then we'll talk about what to do next all right so here is our finished product 
Yeah, well, I mean, it finished like it's getting ready to go in the oven product. So what do we got to do next? We're going to bake these at 375 degrees. What? Isn't that the same temperature you're doing the wings at? Why, yes. Yes, it is. I'm glad you uh, caught that. And it just so happens we have 26 minutes left on the oven for the wings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these on the bottom rack, which is really close to the middle rack. And then that way I can cook them both at the same time. And then uh, hopefully they'll all come out. They'll, everything will come out done and looking good. These should be golden brown just like pizza crust. And the cheese should be nice and melty. With the pan, if you are using a non-stick pan, don't sweat it. You do nothing else to it. If you are not using a non-stick pan, uh, spray it with, uh, with some uh, vegetable spray. Or uh, butter or something of that nature. That way uh, things don't stick. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get these in the oven for the remaining 25 minutes. And when we come back, hopefully I'll have a bunch of stuff for us to try. All right. I'll see you here in just a minute. All right. So uh, good and bad news is two of the three items are done. Um, I'm kind of special and I, we will be getting a new slow cooker tomorrow. Um, our meatballs, the slow, the slow cooker doesn't have a uh, knob. So it's hard to tell where it is sometimes. And I accidentally had it stuck on warm for, oh, I don't know, 45 minutes. So they're not done yet, but that's all right because the wings are and the uh, taco rolls are. And that's what I really was hoping to test out. Now, we will get to take a look at the meatballs, but we'll do that. I'll probably throw it in with the baking video um, tomorrow. So our pizza rolls, our pizza, our taco rolls are done. They actually look quite good. Um, I'm very impressed. So the last thing we have to do with those is I've warmed up some queso and we just have to kind of drizzle the queso on there. You know, now you don't have to put queso on there uh, on, on these. You can put whatever you want. Salsa, avocados, guacamole, you know, um, just some tomatoes, taco sauce. I mean, whatever your heart desires. Um, it just, and the, the recipe I found it, uh, it had a uh, queso on it and uh, it had some avocados, but I'm not a fan of avocados and we don't have any. So uh, I personally will, you won't see me putting them on here. Uh, so we got that on there. And then, so here's our finished product minus some salsa that we'll dip it in uh, when we go to serve. And then here is our wings. Um, they look beautiful. You know, and they smell great. So we are two thirds of the way there. Let me uh, go grab a small plate real quick so we can try these out. Hold on for me one sec. All right, I'm back. So we will grab one of the taco slash cinnamon rolls and we will grab one of the wings and so that way I don't take it away from our guests when they show up, because they should be here in about the next 10, 15 minutes. Meanwhile, I'll just stick these back in the oven with the door open. So let's try these taco rolls first with this queso on them. Those are pretty all right. That's an eight little party snack. And it didn't take long to make. It took about 10 minutes to put it together, 15. Then 20 minutes in the oven. Well, 25 minutes. Yeah. I would do these for a party. Double up the recipe. Put them on there. Those are good. Good enough. I'll eat the whole thing in one bite. I like those. Now, the wings. So they get done chewing. I'm excited to try this only because it's a 60, uh, almost 60 year old recipe. And it was something that Betty White enjoyed. So we're going to give these a shot also. That's not bad. It's a uh, savory. A little spicy, but not horribly. 
No, I'm not at all. It's got just enough there to let you know it's there. They're savory. I really thought that the the so the amount of soy sauce you were putting in it was going to take away from it, but the brown sugar really balances it. That uh, I would serve this at a party. I'd serve either of these at a party, for sure. Sorry, I'm starved. I haven't been, I've eaten all day. I've been so busy cooking. Gotta love a little bit of gristle. All right, so Betty White's wings, really good. The only thing I might change differently the next time is about three quarters of the way through cooking, halfway through cooking, I flipped them. And then I think about three quarters of the way through cooking, I would eliminate some of the sauce they're sitting in. You know, whether it be just pour out a little bit of it, take a spoon and scoop some of it out. They didn't do bad, but, and by the time they go to serve, they, they will be fine. But I, I think I would like to get them just a little crispier all the way around, where they sat in that sauce, the bottom of them sat in that sauce. They're not quite crispy. Now the, the skin turned out great. Not hating on that at all. So I'm gonna call both of these for sure winners. Um, like I said, we'll talk about the, uh, meatballs tomorrow uh, when we uh, do some baking um, I'll review the meatballs but like I said, I've made those before and I follow the recipe just like I did the last time so I, I know they'll be good but I, I want to talk about them um, we almost made it through three if I would have just gotten the on the right temperature with the slow cooker we'd have done three meals or three side dishes or three party dishes in, in less than an hour less than two hours that's not bad. Minimum uh, minimum prep work, all of it was oven time. Or slow cooker time in this case. So anyhow, tomorrow we're going to do a red velvet cake that I think is going to be out of this world. I really think you'll enjoy it. And uh, it's complex. Uh, it's got an icing I've never made before. I've never made a red velvet cake before, let alone this icing. So that'll be cool. And we'll uh, look at those uh, meatballs. All right, I love you. I love you very much. Try these wings and try these taco rolls. They're absolutely amazing. And uh, tell somebody else you love them and love them very much. Make these and share them. Make some friends in the neighborhood. These will go a long way, I guarantee it. They'll be like, oh my God, did you taste those wings? Let's all go down to their house and hang out. And all of a sudden, you're making friends everywhere. So until tomorrow for Red Velvet Cake and a review on the meatballs, uh, the zesty and sweet meatballs, I'll see you then. All right. I love you. Talk to you later. Bye.